Hi, my name is Jerry Hesch. I'm a physical therapist and a manual therapist. Uh, I do joint treatment and I utilize a technique that I've developed over 30 years called the Hesch Method. And um, this is my course workbook. It's a 200 page workbook that accompanies a workshop that I teach. And I also have a distance learning and advanced videos. But I'm here to talk about the torsion chapter in Eric Dalton's book. And I'm really excited about that book. It's quite an honor to be able to present on that book. Sacral torsions have confused many therapists for many, many years and many clinicians as well. And it certainly confused me for a very, very long time. And it's a complex movement of the sacrum about an oblique axis that involves rotation, a little bit of flexed extension, and side bending as well. It certainly involves the lumbosacral junction as well, involving the L5-S1 facets and even most likely the four or five facets as well. It's a very complex movement and it involves muscle spasm and guarding and the actual motion in the SI joint as we know is very slight um, but nonetheless motion going through that structure does get blocked and it's pretty difficult to visualize the movement that occurs over the uh, right and the left because the upper part starts on the left oblique axes. Um, the language is very confusing and in this chapter I make the language much simpler to utilize and understand, and the language predicts the treatment. I also simplify the treatment technique because it can be treated very simply. And I utilize emotion testing, which I call springing with awareness. It's a little bit different than spring testing because spring testing is a thrust, where springing with awareness is taking up the slack in the joint structure, imparting a specific amount of force, and perceiving the recoil. You can repeat it a couple of times, um, and there's a final recoil. And it's certainly easy to visualize a child's toy, uh, this being a block, a child's lettered block, wood block. It's easy to visualize that, the front face, and also in three-dimensional space, and it moving about an oblique axis. But the sacrum is a little bit more confusing. So in that chapter, I really simplify that concept. And I've done research over the last 15 years. Every time I teach a workshop, I survey the therapist and find out how much exposure they've had. They've all had what one would think to be adequate exposure, but they don't understand sacral torsions enough to evaluate and treat them. And there's lots of research to, to discourage treatment of the SI joint, and there's a lot of research to encourage treatment. And so I think the model needs to be reevaluated, and I've taken um, uh, some effort in doing that in that book chapter. And um, I think that that uh, summarizes my goals for that chapter. And in surveying the therapists, um, many of them are still confused, uh, but when they take my workshop, I'm able to, in 10 minutes, Give them tools that make understanding sacral torsion very easy to understand, very easy to use language, and very easy to treat. And patients can learn self-treatment. So um, I think it's an important topic, and I think the conversation needs to continue, and I thank you very much.